All right, well, ladies and gents, welcome to American Vindicta. Let's get started. For one thing, it's Monday, January 9th, 2023. Thank you all for being here. I want to read to you an article that was wrote by Future Tech News back in January 13th of 2021 by Virgilio Marin. Now, it's the first time I've ever seen this. Maybe this is the first time many of you have ever heard of it. But this is uh, disturbing. This is about China. So we all know China, the world superpower that wants to destroy America. Um, they have some interesting tactics as far as it comes to personnel that are deserting. And let's go over this because I think it's pertinent. So here's the article. China is developing suicide military helmets equipped with remote self-destruct capabilities that can be initiated by their commander. Chinese soldiers stationed in Tibet will be donning a newly developed suicide helmet that is equipped with a self-destruct button that can be pressed at will by the soldiers or their commander. The button initiates the explosion of an embedded bomb that is effectively killing the soldier. Now, I don't know how many of you will be able to see this very well. Of course, you listening to this on audio won't be able to, so make sure that you sign up for the American Vindicta show on both Rumble and on YouTube. I, I I highly implore everyone that is subscribed on YouTube to just go to the Rumble channel and subscribe. You don't even have to monitor it. It's the same stuff. Occasionally, uh, like the latest that I put out that's on the Rumble channel, um, there's very little things that are on the Rumble channel that's not on the YouTube. It's, it's the backup because YouTube sucks and they hate me. But we did a really cool discussion on the Doug and Dave Intel report with uh, the Paleo Research Group founder, Brent Height, also one of my very good friends, um, Caving Explorer, uh, Modern Day Explorer within the wilderness areas. Um, he really researches a lot of Paleolithic stuff. He's, he's one of the experts in the fields as far as I'm um, I'm concerned. I mean, Brent doesn't do internet research. He actually goes out and does the research. So he's a pleasure to be with, and uh, we were able to have him on, and we talked about everybody's favorite subject, giants and megalithic gigantic structures. You know, this is one of the topics, before I get into this article within, the, uh, within China, this is one of those topics that I used to love to drive around in my police car and listen to, because... You know, I mean, it's better than all the other, other crap that we got to listen to, right? But do you ever feel like there was never enough of that discussion? Like, do you ever feel like that discussion went away and it's like it's almost robbed from us? Well, if you like that discussion, we had an awesome one on the Intel report. And by the way, the Doug and Dave Intel report is on Rumble as well. It's all one word, Doug and Dave Intel report. I shouldn't have to spell that out for most of you. Uh, a few of my Marines, if you do need the spelling, let me know. But for the most part, you know, we're trying to get the Intel report up and running because we're trying to get as much of the information out there that we're doing as possible because it's kind of segregated onto other safer networks uh, because Hodges is always under attack by somebody. Um, occasionally, I get the same thing. I'll get a little bit internet um Internet censorship, I guess you could say, a little bit of interference. Uh, but for the most part, God willing, God's on our side. We're being left alone. So uh, please support the Intel Report, Doug and Dave Intel Report on Rumble. If you listen to me, if you can do me a huge favor and just go to it and subscribe to it, you ain't got to do nothing else. Uh, it, it would help boost our numbers and it helps get this cyclic rate 
of uh profits off of rumble uh up and going i think i'm i'm at like almost 900 subscribers on rumble and i've made a total of eight dollars so far so i want to kind of keep doing this for y'all and i think y'all like me doing this for you as well so if you can help me by subscribing and sharing i'd appreciate it all right but uh we had an awesome conversation i actually surprised myself with some of the knowledge that i know of course i've hung around these guys for a long time the la marzulis the steve quails um you know the timothy alberinos tim's one of my very very good friends um you know it's uh hell we were just talking last night for like an hour and a half um you know it's it's one of those things where you get into these conversations you and then you get the ability to go to the places these actual megalithic structures or um you know investigate places where there's supposed giant artifacts bodies Places where they lived, they dwelled, the people that they harassed, enslaved, or possibly ate. That's what the Paleo Research Group is doing now. That's the reason why we're in Arkansas, because of all the mounds. That's the reason why we go to the caves, because there's plenty of places where if you don't go to it, you won't know what's there. But we know that within this area that we're in, the word Raphaim and Nephilim are, are used so much. This is giant territory. It's all over the place. The mound builders. It's all over the place. And we don't know who they are. We know that they were tall people. We knew that they had mathematics that didn't exist. We knew that they had methodologies of construction that are unlike anything else. And we even have a Native American who's on our team who says that this isn't what my people built. It was here before. So we're out there trying to search for who were the other people that built it. And if you have mounds, I've said this before, if you have mounds, uh, caves, pictographs, um, petroglyphs, and you want them to be explored, or you at least want to share them, uh, send them to me, AmericanVindictaShow at gmail.com. I'll take a look at them, I'll pass them on to the team, and uh, we'll get back to you. There's a lot of people, a lot of questions that have really cool stuff on their land, like there's a guy uh, currently right now in Missouri that we're helping uh, investigate a bunch of crazy stuff that's on his land. So, um, you know, if, if you're interested, send me the information, we'll take a look at it. Um, but there's so much out there. There's over a hundred thousand mounds that have been discovered. That's just what's been discovered. It's estimated to be much more than that, but only 20,000 of them have actually been looked into. So, you know, 80% of these mounds have not been looked into. What's in them? We have access to places where there are mounds that have not been excavated. And it's like cracking open a prehistoric egg, man. Is it going to be a bird or a dinosaur? You know, I'm, I'm so interested. So, you know, it, in it takes a, it takes a little bit of money to get stuff like this moving uh, but it takes the manpower to get out into the field, get out from behind your books, gentlemen, for all you explorers out there, get out into the field, get a little dirty. You may stay in a, a, a two-star or three-star hotel instead of your four-star hotel. You may not eat the greatest food that you want, but that's not what we're there for. We're there for what's in the ground. And that's what the people want to hear. The people want to hear what's out there. What's the strange and spectacular? One of the things that, you know, we are, for whatever reason, forbidden to know, why did the Smithsonian take away so many of these gigantic skeletons? Why did they do away with them? Why the cover-up? It's just a giant skeleton. What was the need if they're just abnormally large people? It's because there's another layer to this. There's another layer to this. And thankfully, we do have men like Tim Alberino. We do have men like L.A. Marzulli who are out there, who are trying to uncover to the best that they can what's out there. And now we're in the field as well, so we're just another arrow in the quiver. So if you like these conversations, please leave a comment below. I will have Brent on the show uh, here fairly soon, and we're going to have this conversation again about giants and megalithic structures. We're going to try and go into more detail. Um, that one will be on YouTube. Uh, the reason why the Doug and Dave Intel report is not on YouTube 
Um, it has to do more with advertisement. Um, certain advertisers don't want certain things on certain platforms, and I just have to leave it like that. So we're kind of limited, and that sucks. But hey, if you want to see a really cool uh, hour and a half long conversation, go to the Rumble channel for either my show or for the Doug and Dave Intel Report and watch it. It's called Giants and Giant Structures with Brent Height. It's an awesome interview. We had a we had a heck of a fun time doing it. All right. So to get back on to today's lesson, boys and girls, as to why you don't want to be a member in the PLA, let's talk about this. The development of the suicide helmet. Okay, so from what I've been able to learn so far, here is my old trusty helmet. Let's see if I can get this taken off. And this helmet's been all around the world. This is a... Um, there we go. This helmet, let's say the explosives, are inlaid on the inside of the helmet. As you see, the inside of the helmet will be explosives. There is a camera attached to it, like this big honking flashlight of mine. There's a camera attached to it, and there's an antenna attached to it. And more or less, the story goes, if you want to be a part of the PLA, you're going to have to wear a device on your head that's a kamikaze helmet. I don't know how else to say it. It's a kamikaze helmet. And what they're stating is that the button on the, there's a button that'll be on the soldier that will be able to initiate the embedded bomb in the helmet, which would effectively kill the soldier. Now, this is a quote from this. At a battalion or brigade level command center, a commander monitors a soldier who is far away by using the navigation system. The commander can activate the self-destruct function of the soldier's helmet if he can't get in contact with him. And this is, of course, brought to us by their own state-run media called the China Observer. And now this post is deleted. Soldiers can also hit the button themselves. Quote, if a soldier is seriously wounded and doesn't want to be captured, he can activate the self-destruct function himself. And this can maim other soldiers that have captured him, and it can maintain his dignity by killing him as to prevent the enemy from obtaining the system. They're not after the explosive donut around your head. The new military gear comes as more members of the People's Liberation Army, China's regular armed forces, are deserting their posts or disobeying their commander. Now, before I, I get into the rest of this article, at what extent is there is the is the PLA soldiers deserting their posts that you have to now have a brand new infrastructure put in place to put plastic explosives inside a helmet to kill the soldier for leaving? I mean, why? Why would they want to leave the Communist Party of China in the midst of a firefight? Drop their gun, run to India or Tibet. Now, I wonder, because... The chin straps are always buckled in. If you go to take the helmet off, would that explode it? Because then, I mean, if, if if he tosses the helmet down and it doesn't explode, the guy's free. But is there a commander visually watching that has like an iPad or whatever? Because, you know, they make all the iPads. And, you know, soldiers one through 30, what probably has a number on the back of his helmet so that he can see if he deserts, so poof, no more deserting. Now you're dessert for the birds. So what does that mean? What that really means is China 
is so grotesque of a nation. They can't control their military. There's no honor in what's going on here, by the way. There's no honor in committing suicide. Desperate despots, tyrannical dictatorships, atro- uh, the, the uh, autocracies committing atrocities. It's places like this that have to have the threat of death upon your life if you don't serve. Or if you give up. I couldn't imagine. I mean, for all you guys who are in the military, could you imagine if, you know, while you're in boot camp, you're being instructed about your special IED helmet that you're putting on, your improvised explosive device helmet? It's there to save your head from shrapnel and bullets. So what happens if you get struck in the head and you got explosives in it? Does it ignite it? Man, that's crazy. You know what this tells me, though? We always talk about, like, if China comes to invade America, what is that going to look like? Is it going to look like, um, is it going to look like the way the Hollywood would portray it, where it's just mass of millions and millions and millions of the Chinese coming over, like in Red Dawn and all this other stuff, parachuting out of the skies, which is completely stupid. Maybe. But what it tells me is that, much like Persia, when they fought in Thermopylae against the um, the Greek resistance, most of your army are slaves. You have to be. We have to talk about the fact that they have indentured slaves in the factories making probably 90% of what's inside your home or on your person right now. And then indentured slaves in their military. Why do you think all this stuff about the pandemic is going on and is now continuing again? I think, honestly, the pandemic scare in China is more about controlling the resistance and the outflow of information. It's about suppressing the people who are rising up in the streets and resisting China. Most likely, that's why pandemics are still real. Plenty of people died in them. Plenty of people get extremely sick. Some don't recover. But it doesn't mean that during that point in time, the state can't make a legislation that helps them strengthen the grasp that they have on your movements, on your rights. Do you think you really have rights in China? You have the right to work in a factory until you die. And then you also have the right to fight until you die now. You know, the fact that they said that they lose radio communication they'll just bloop detonate the helmet we would shoot a red or green starburst into the sky at least in iraq and afghanistan that's that's what we would do if we lost comms everybody knows that if you lose comms you're going to shoot a red or green starburst most likely from a pop flare up into the sky or from you know your forty mic mic that typically you have on your on your M4s, and then everybody will know. Oh look, green, and then the guy who's on guard or or on watch duty, radio duty, he'll go. Okay, green starburst, radio communications down for you know second platoon, second squad, which was my old huh. back in the day. Uh, that was that was us two two. Um. Not every country in the world is like America. This is this is why it's dangerous, gents. This is why it's dangerous that we capitulate or agree at all to do anything with China. China is the only country that is building up for war against America. China is willing to kill its own people to force them to fight against their enemies. And yet hardly ever do you hear 
the Democratic Party and a bunch of different Republicans come out and say China is our actual one true enemy that we need to be ready for, getting ready for. You got little sweetheart Lindsey Graham over there trying to con convince somebody to try and assassinate Vladimir Putin, but he ain't said a word about China, has he? Let's go through his bank records. Let's go through his, his IRS bank records, his taxes, like what they just did to Trump. Let's go through Lindsey Graham's or Mitt Romney or McCarthy. Hell, we already know. Uh, you know, some of them are, are very much paid off. It's proven. I don't have to really get into it. It's... It's proven that the PLA has bought off our politicians. And so your politicians who want your vote, who vote on your rights and your taxes and your government, are the same people who are aligning themselves with a literal dictatorship. Unreal, guys. All right, so the newly developed helmet is part of an individual soldier digital combat system developed to ensure that the Chinese side would win any potential conflict with the Indian Army. Troops from both sides have been engaged in numerous skirmishes. Some are absolutely hilarious, like they were beating each other with sticks so that, because they couldn't shoot at each other, so they're out there fist fighting, and they had sticks, and they were hitting themselves. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a border dis uh dispute it's a sino-indian border and they have all different types of uh territorial disputes and it's the uh, ladakh i believe that's how you pronounce it ladakh region and you can you can look up all the videos on amazon or excuse me on youtube they're out there beating the hell out of each other it's it's comical so this system includes an antenna and a bomb, multifunctional night goggles, camera modules, and a digital control terminal that can be worn on the arm. Soldiers outfitted with this system can communicate with the battalion commander at the commander center via radio. They can also commit suicide attacks by detonating the bomb in their helmet when they approach Indian forces. Who thinks like that? The Chinese do. So meanwhile, commanders can order the firing of artillery through the cameras that are mounted on the helmets and that are also mounted within the soldiers' jackets that they're wearing, besides having the power to hit the self-destruct button. So soldiers in special forces units and the squad infantry, as well as the artillery, aviation, and armor divisions will be equipped with this explosive system. Unreal. After the report was released, numerous critics denounced the system. U.S.-based China Affairs commentator Tang Jinyan said that the suicide helmets are proof of the PLA's struggle to control its troops. Completely. I agree with that. Noting that the Chinese military had to use extreme methods just to ensure soldiers do not abandon their posts or disobey their commanders. Now, PLA soldiers are forced to fight after wearing the helmets. Otherwise, they will be killed by their commander, says Tang. I mean, this, how much more evil can you get? You know, this is a, this is the problem. Do you think this type of system will ever come to America? And if it does, what would make it come here? Because right now, soldiers aren't going to wear that. Marines aren't going to wear it. So if our combat fighters are not going to wear it, who would wear the explosive helmet? Maybe a civilian military that's just as big and just as strong and just as well-funded, like Barack Hussein Obama said. 
I'll tell you where this can be developed and be used. When it hits the fan, let me tell you the amnesty button for the for y'all that don't understand what I'm about to say. All right, this is hypothetical. Prophecy has hit the fan. If you lose half your military, but you still got all the guns, you still got all the gear, but you can't force them to fight because no one's there to put the helmet on, then you can go to the prisons. You can go to the prisons. You can go out there, not tell a soul about what's inside the helmets until it's too late. Get them trained real quick and let them loose. All they really need to do is get into an area where they're within close combat of the actual combatants that they need to fight. And then, poof. Two birds with one explosive stone. Uh, I I don't I don't know that it would ever come down to that, but I wouldn't put it past anybody because I don't trust anybody and I don't trust people's goodwill intentions in America, especially not when it has a D or an R in front of their name. General Milley said that if Donald Trump had ever wanted to commit a first strike on China, that he would be obliged to tell his counterpart in China. So if he's that tight with China, do you think General Milley would go along with putting explosive helmets on Americans and making them fight or killing them. Leave it in the comment section below. Love to hear your thoughts. All right, next story. I don't know if, uh, if I'm actually surprised or excited about this in any way at all, but this is coming to you from the Gateway Pundit. Huge conservative hero, Jim Jordan, who I, I like Jim Jordan to an extent, will chair weaponization of government. All right. Let's see what they promise they'll do again. Republicans across America. Deserved to be thrilled this morning with the news conservative bulldog congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio will be leading a select committee investigating the innumerable abuses of power by the Biden regime. Given Jordan's impeccable credentials with the right, the regime better start sweating. According to the Post Millennial, this weaponization of government committee will chiefly focus on four areas the collusion between the regime and big tech. The, the politicalization of the FBI, the Department of Injustice targeting of parents at school board meetings, and Dr. Anthony Fauci. These are the things conservatives have been demanding from Republicans for the past two years. Okay, so let's go over the, the first four. The, the weaponization of government. I like it. I want it. They're already talking about issuing subpoenas. But are you going to arrest anybody? You know how Steve Bannon was arrested and they threatened to put him in prison, but they didn't still? What power are you actually going to have, Jim? Besides the power to expose and harass the weaponization of the government. So let's cover that first. Has the government been, government been weaponized? The government is a weapon. Has always been a weapon. The government has always been weaponized and will continue to always be weaponized. There's no way around it.
the problem is is that the the congressmen are going to use the same instruments that are weaponized to investigate the ones that they accuse to be weaponized. Unless you have a completely independent body that's going to be pulling this investigation, what am I exp what am I supposed to expect? They're going to deny you your emails. You're going to give them papers dropped off, summons and subpoenas, things that they have to show up for. They don't have to show up for it. Are you going to issue a bench warrant? You can't issue a warrant. And if so, who's going to serve it? And if so, are they going to spend any time in jail or prison? No. So what do we America expect from you with this? To me, this is another one of those shows, but there could be something that happens with this. And I want to bring it up to you. So let's cover the rest of this first. All right, so they're going to focus on the regime and big tech. If you go back a couple of episodes ago, I ask that you please listen to uh, the PRISM program. The FISA courts gave the NSA, the FBI, the CIA, DHS, DOJ, everyone, the ability to spy on you, the ability to hack you. They gave themselves the ability to legally do it. And the Supreme Court can't do jack squat about it. What, there's already been exposed like 100 FBI agents are in uh, Twitter, working for Twitter? How many FBI agents are working for Fox News and CNN? Probably most of them are in CNN. Or the CIA. They're informers. They're familiars. So once again, you're investigating yourselves. All right. The, the politicalization of the FBI. The FBI's weaponized, no doubt about it. The FBI's been weaponized since what? The FBI's been created. The FBI is a paramilitary investigatory uh, agency that seem to be able to have amnesty to do whatever they want, and they're covered no matter what, and there's very little accountability. And eventually, the FBI keeps doing stuff like this subverting Americans, spying on them, setting people up, framing people. Yeah, I said it, framing people, deciding who's going to be the president. Eventually, people are going to get tired of it, and either a large group of people or a deranged person is going to physically start attacking FBI agents, and I don't want that, but there are many who do. The FBI, you have lost your trust with the American people, and you're not going to get it back either. I don't care how many of you out there that work for the FBI I think you're good people, you're doing good jobs, and I know a few of you, and I know you're out there doing good jobs. I know your service records. I know what military units you were in. I know that you think that you're continuing your tour of patriotism towards the country, but people don't care about that. People don't care. People do not care if you saved a puppy and a nun yesterday and then you gave them a ticket the next day. They dislike you now because you interfered with them. It doesn't matter how heroic you were prior. America has a lot of problems, a lot of ego problems, a lot of this is America, this shouldn't be happening here problems. And, and 
I will say that probably the majority of all those complaints are accurate and correct. And you do have tyrannical people who put on the badge. You do have more tyrannical people who put on a suit than put on a badge, though. But you have foolish people who follow the suit. Because you want your 6C coverage, your law enforcement retirement coverage, you want your LEAP pay, you want your GS-13, GS-14 pay, your cool little badge, the FBI's badges are small, I don't know why, your cool little badge, your take-home car sometimes if you're lucky, the gun, the creds. I get it. You set yourself up pretty well when you get out of the FBI. If you stay in there long enough. But, you know, I mean, at that point in time, it's all about you and it's not about us anymore. Look at all this crazy stuff that's going on around the country. You people are focused on parents that are complaining to school boards. The FBI, the moment the DOJ said we need investigations into this, the FBI should have said, sure thing. We'll look into it. We'll get back to you. The FBI should not have been knocking on people's doors, even if it's a, a cursory investigation where we have to say, did you say this? Okay, please don't say that again. End of report. No threat found here. But vindictive people are in charge. Vindictive people with a purpose the purpose is disrupting the Constitution and your rights. Subverting it, destroying it, disrupting it. So many things I want to say. But I'm going to try and keep this as PG-13 as possible. All right, let's move on to the next one, the, politi the politicalization of the FBI. Um, so the next one, the Department of Justice is targeting of parents at school board meetings. You talk about an abuse of power. Hey, Department of Justice, why don't you go and track down the cartels? Why don't you go and stop the actual influx of illegal people and narcotics and weapons and criminals? and terrorism why don't you try and infiltrate the jihadi groups they didn't go away as we're going to learn here in a little bit they didn't go away where are you there why is everything right-wing extremism when you can look at the fbi statistics and find out if you really cared do a little bit better note-taking fbi DOJ, and you'll find out that probably 80% or more of the people that are incarcerated for violent domestic extremism are leftists. DOJ, you suck. All right, Anthony Fauci. We're going to investigate little Anthony Fauci. Anthony Fauci is as guilty as the day is long. He's a scumbag. I know guys that run his personal uh, security detail at one point. And they told me, hey, you know what? Besides what everyone's saying about Anthony Fauci, he was actually a really nice guy and a good boss to work for. He might have been a nice guy. People thought Jeffrey Dahmer was a nice guy. People have to be held accountable. And if the criminals in the act are not held accountable, then the courts need to be held accountable. If the courts can't do anything because the prosecutors won't do their job, then they need to be held accountable. And if the prosecutors can't prosecute because they can't find witnesses or law enforcement isn't cooperating, then they need to be held accountable. But there's a whole chain of command here of people that need to be held accountable. 
Anthony Fauci may have signed his name digitally somewhere a couple times, send stuff all around the world that's pandemic related. That's not disputed anymore. YouTube, don't censor me for saying that. It's not disputed. However, what about all the people involved in the arc of the chain of command? From the GS5 uh, door greeters, letting people in to uh, the, the office space, to the secretariat, all the way up. I don't know what their rank structure looks like or who even works there. But if you were involved in this mess, you better be a part of that witness testimony. I better have affidavits that I can FOIA from every one of them. Let's see how in-depth Jim Jordan gets. I'll pump my brakes until he gets started, but I'm not expecting much. The 118th House of Representatives will see the formation of a new select committee headed by Jim Jordan to dig into the abuse of power and the weaponization of the government. This investigative panel will demand emails and correspondence between the Biden administration and big tech companies and follows the massive revelations that came to light through the recent release of the Twitter files. The probe into communications between tech giants and President Biden's aides will look for and, and aides as in the people that work for him, not like President Biden's aides. He may have aides, I don't know. Uh, but they will look for government pressure that could have resulted in censorship or harassment of conservatives or squelching of debate on polarizing policies, including the CDC and on COVID. This is a report from Axios. If the government personnel and agencies do not comply, subpoenas are likely to be issued per GOP source. The GOP is committed into digging into the politicization of the FBI, which not only includes the work done to discredit accurate reporting from the New York Post in the lead up to the 2020 presidential election, but the allegations of Russia election interference in the lead up to the 2016 election. The use of Biden's Department of Justice to go after parents who spoke out angrily at school board meetings will be investigated as well. Merrick Garland should go to jail. Let's see what power you have, Jim Jordan. Because here's the thing. If you go through this whole rigmarole and you don't do anything and it's just another song and dance play by the theater of Congress, nobody's going to care. The Republicans are going to lose even more power, which I could care less because I don't think either organization is doing good for the country. You know, Trump was recently out saying that when he becomes president again, he's going to completely go the absolute opposite direction that he was going, and he's going to be hardcore. And I did like this. He was going to identify the Mexican drug cartels as international terrorism, and he was going to combat them military. Invade Mexico. Please. That's the only way you're going to do this. Oh, but I could sit there with a Predator drone and he could strike people from all around the world for whatever different reasons. We can do the same. We can do it better, though. There should be a 100-mile buffer zone between the Guadalupe River and 100 miles deep into Mexico. And if you cross that area, there should be like four or five major ports. Every state should have a major port maybe two, and just expect long traffic jams. But otherwise, how are you going to defeat the cartels? You need to bulldoze Juarez, Cali or California. You need to boot, uh, the bulldoze Juarez, Mexico, and everything 100 miles deep 
into the Mexican border. Bulldoze it all. Fill it with barbed wire and mines. Try to cross that. If you want to come over here legally, you have to follow the path. That's wishful thinking. Doug Thornton for president, 2024. But I will say this. I like Jim Jordan. I think he'll do what he can. I just don't think there's much the man can do. So best of luck to you, uh, Congressman Jordan. I hope you can expose all the bullshit that's out there. Lay it all out there. Expose the sins of the leaders to the people. But I give a caveat to this. What if he exposes too much? What if Jim Jordan, because you know the Hunter Biden laptop, it's coming. What if he exposes something so damning that the next big event happens? The next big false flag terror attack, pandemic, World War III, lights out, blackout, grid down. Man, it could happen. It's the perfect, it's 2023 is the perfect year for craziness to happen. And it's going to happen. Here, before we, we get off, I want to read this to you real quick. I was going to read to you about mastering irregular warfare within the military, but we'll save that for another day. Let's just go ahead and state that uh, the experts think our military sucks. That's never good. All right, man arrested after alleged terror incident at Vegas Power Plant. Here's another attack upon the grid. Guys, gals, fairy tale creatures. It doesn't matter your pronoun. If you don't have power and you're not prepared for it, life's going to suck and people are going to die. Why is it out of nowhere? The all of a sudden attack upon the power grid is happening. Every week we're getting a story or two. It's going to happen. It is the Achilles heel of America. It is the glass jaw of our infrastructure. The power grid. It is fragile. It is easy to sever. And Everyone will be affected by it. Everyone gets put on the same playing field. You see this radio? Doesn't have a battery on it. You know why? Because the battery's charging. What's charging it? Sure as hell isn't a hamster spinning around in a, in a wheel that's powering an alternator that's keeping a battery in charge. No, it's the regular electricity that keeps that light bulb on, that keeps this going. It's how you listen to me. When the electricity is down, command and control is shut. It's gone. You're not going to hear anything. If you have a NOAA radio like this, NOAA radio, uh, which, which the channel can be in here, all right? You can buy these from Bob Griswold. He pays me to say that. Um, they're awesome radios. Love them. It's, it's almost an embitter like what we use in the military. <laughs> But listen to this, ham radio operators, you'll be the only guys out there with intel. I am slipping by on the times of not getting my hammer license, but I'm going to do it. I already got an area right over here set up so that whenever I get my hammer uh, license, I'll be having a ham radio station right there. Because the need to have knowledge and communication is key to survival. It's key. And if if you and your loved ones would pay the $200 that it costs to get your ham radio license or whatever, it's fairly benign, and cheap. You know, I mean, if it was me, all of my children will be ham radio operators. And when they grow up, 
wherever they go. If the snowstorm hits, the power is out, cell phone towers are down, turn on the radio station, find the right frequency. Hey, you, this is me. Come in over. And then hopefully I'll get that return back transmission. But there's a lot of peace in that knowledge that I would hear something back because if I didn't hear something back within a certain amount of time, daddy's coming to pay you a visit. But you got to understand this, you know, the, the power grid's a big deal. It's a big deal. Look what's happening in California with these wow, crazy um, storms that are happening. I've been paying attention to it. California, you're about to get another week's worth of 10 to 12 inches of rain a day. They're already evacuating some towns. 500,000 people are without power. 500,000 people are without what? Power. Again, the electric grid is so sensitive. It's like a liberal. You just look at it wrong. You call it the wrong thing, and it just collapses. It fractures. It dies right there in front of you. Sensitive feelings. That That is our power grid. Our power grid is ran off of liberal tears, off of men who actually get out in the field and women who get out in the field. They physically have to construct things with their hands. They don't morph into a big ass that's sitting in a chair with 10 fingers sticking out of it. And they just play video games all day. They have to get out there and work. My nephew, God bless him. He, I believe he's a supervisor now, but that's what he does. He's a lineman, all right? We need, that is, the, those guys are a critical infrastructure of America within themselves. We need those guys. I mean, I don't understand why they aren't almost considered a part of like, I don't know, like national security, right? You need the power lines to be working. Everything collapses if not. If you ever look, whenever a big storm's coming in, what's the first thing to get mobilized? When a huge hurricane's coming in, the first thing to get mobilized, it's not FEMA. FEMA will be there after the storm leaves. I know you federal employees, please spare me because I was deployed to many of those hurricanes. And you show up afterwards. The power companies, they're the first ones to line up all the linemen. God bless them, every single one of you who do that. And they get out there, and man, the stuff that those guys could tell you, the stories that they could tell you. But the power's out in certain portions of California. It could continue to go out. Right now, the report that I was reading this morning from the local news is that the dams, certain dams are at a breaking point. A breaking point? What happens when a dam breaks? Millions upon millions of gallons of water surging downstream. More flooding, more death, more destruction, more chaos. How prepped are you, California? Have you evacuated yet? That's what they've been asking people, to evacuate certain areas. Can you evacuate? Are the roads good enough to evacuate? I tell you people this all the time, you need to have the ability to self-rescue. This has nothing to do with my macho-ness, but it's the part of the reason why I have a 2000 model 7.3 liter Ford Excursion that every week is having something new replaced on it, upgraded to it, that has 40-inch tires and a 10-inch lift. I know it gets at least eight miles to the gallon on a good day, even with the chip that I just put in it, which puts me at like, I think, close to 500 horsepower flying down the highway. But we drive... We drive the the soccer van, the minivan, which is a Toyota Sienna van is awesome, by the way. If you never drove one, they look cool. They, they don't look bad, but the performance is out of this world. I love that car. 
Um, but that big monster of a Ford, that excursion of mine, it is the get out of Dodge wagon and run you over on the way out, by the way. Go through the ditches if I have to, to go around places. You know, it, it, I don't know, guys, be prepared to self-rescue. If not, be prepared to be hunkered down. If you can't flee, which there's plenty of, plenty of reasons for why not to, plenty of reasons for why you need to stay in. I'm more of a bug in kind of guy. But if you need to flee, make sure your vehicle is capable of doing that. That's why I stress to people, have a four-wheel drive vehicle. It doesn't have to be brand new, gas or diesel. Who cares? It's the destination and how I get there. Now then, you don't have to have oversized super swamper tires on it. You know, it, it doesn't have to look like it's born from a Mad Max movie. Maybe the, one of these days I'll do a walk around on my excursion and how I got it all set up. Some of you guys might like that. Little Little tips of stuff that I put in there. Um, but you know, at least have a vehicle that is, that is workable. And once again, while you got the chance, folks get maintenance done on your vehicle. Don't be that one guy you're trying to evacuate and your damn car breaks down because you never take care of it because you procrastinate, but you never forget to stop at Dunkin' Donuts. Do you, you never forget to stop on the way home and grab that extra six pack, but you don't change the tires. You don't rotate out all the fluids inside of it or the oil you just kind of that makes it every day be wise as serpents be prepared to self-rescue whatever is going to be exposed from this big investigation process if it's big enough they will they they the invisible they We'll press the emergency duress button and something will happen that will take all of our eyes off of whatever was just exposed. And how do you take off your, your eyes off of something that's been exposed that's on television or on the phones? Cut the power. That's what's so dangerous about all this, guys. I think about this all the time. Of course, I'm also paranoid, apparently. I got an email from someone the other day telling me, Doug, you're paranoid. <laughs> Have you lived in the United States of 2023 yet? All right, so listen to this. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department states that its counterterrorism division identified the suspect as a 34-year-old Mohammed Mesmerian. Now, Muhammad Mesmerian was taken to the Clark County Detention Center and has been charged with committing an act of terrorism, first-degree arson, third-degree arson, destroying or injuring real or personal property in escape by a felony prisoner. Mesmerian clarified that he burned the Toyota Camry a couple of days ago. Um. Mesmerian said that he burned the vehicle at a Tesla solar plant and he did it for the future. An employee at the facility told the media outlet that the fire caused major damage, estimating that it would take two years to receive uh, replacement parts. Two years! The damaged unit was shut down and isn't producing electricity at this time. Investigators told the channel that they believe Mesmerian siphoned gasoline from his vehicle, placed gas on wires at the transformer before setting them on fire. Security camera footage was also released allegedly showing the suspect lighting his car on fire near the transformer. Damage was done to the Mega Solar Array Facility. Really, you couldn't come up with something different. The Mega Solar Array Facility, which provides power to the MGM properties, including its hotels. Following an incident at the Mega Solar Array Facility, on-site personnel immediately notified authorities and shut down the plant's operations as a precaution in accordance with the industry standard safety protocols. 
spokesperson for Invin Injury, however the hell you pronounce that, which manages the plant, told the media outlet that no one was injured and we are currently restoring the facility's full operations. Well, at least nobody was injured. At least they're able to restore it back to full operations and to get the power back out there. Before I talk about the other attacks, is this guy being investigated for Islamic extremism? Is he a left wing or is he a right wing? Would you expect that this guy's immediately being charged for terrorism? That this was spontaneous and no one saw it coming? Or that they have been coaching this guy to do this? Or, follow me here, was this an actual act of domestic terrorism? The lone wolf style attack, the copycat style attack, because this guy is immediately being pronounced as being tried or as being convicted for terrorism. But yet the two jackasses up in the Northwest, both leftist, part of the Nazi Socialist Party, attacked four different uh, Transformers, and it's never been announced that they were terrorism related. Think about that. All right. Here's the other attacks. While there have been several attacks on power plants and substations in recent weeks, the Vegas attack hadn't garnered any major mainstream media coverage as of January 8th. Officials in Washington state confirmed that they arrested two men several uh, for several attacks on power substations near Tacoma. I know some of you fed boys that work out there in Tacoma. Although the two weren't charged with terrorism-related accounts. Hmm. Same attack, different motive. The motive was to rob places. This guy's motive was to, what, what did he say? Save the world or something? Let's go back up here. Gosh, damn it. I mean, this is just stupid at this point. It doesn't matter what the guy did it for. It is a terrorist attack. Said he did it for the future. I want this as part of the uh, the new green party, whatever, that's starting to attack people or infrastructure. You don't really hear too much of that, but it is it is happening. It's going on. So be prepared. That's all I'm telling you. Just be prepared. People are idiots. There's plenty of psychos, plenty of terrorism. The grid is always going to be a soft target that's going to be always, always going to be vulnerable. Which to end this note, which is the reason why uh, February 18th, let's go to Go to my calendar, February, excuse me, Friday, February 17th, the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th. Myself and uh, one of my buddies, Steve Reyes, who's going to be back on the show with us soon, former Special Forces, uh, medic, SEER instructor, and all that stuff. We're going to be putting on a course. It's going to be different than the active shooter course. There's not going to be any PowerPoints. This is all going to be out in the field, and we're going to split it up into three different things. So in the morning, you're going to be getting the actual tactical training from me. Then after lunch, you're going to come back, and you're going to get all of the medical training, and then we're going to have discussions on survival. Uh, and, and that's Doc's thing, so I'll let Doc get into that. But on the fourth day, we're going to put you in a grid-down scenario. Okay, so this grid down scenario is going to be where you get to test the culmination of the three days worth of training. 
and put it all to use on that fourth day. And it's going to be on the daytime, there'll be a mission for you to do. And at night, there'll be a mission for you to do. There's going to be the opportunity to use our thermals, our night vision. You'll have our airsoft gun equipment. You don't have to own a weapon to come out here. No felons, no thank you, no FBI, unless you actually want real training. Uh, we're not out here to teach militias to overthrow governments. This is community preparedness, individual preparedness, teaching you your self-rescue, your get-home bag. If you want to wear your kit, bring it. If you want to bring your bag that has all your kit in it, however you want to do that, bring it. Let's test it out. Let's see if it's apl uh, applicable to the situation. Because I think the closest thing that you're going to get is going to be training like this at night wandering through the woods, having to apply tactics, possibly medicine, possibly a little bit of search evasion and resistance, really not too much in resistance, but it may, it may come. Um, you're going to be taught nothing that is top secret. So we're going to be in the clear there. But what we're doing is we're giving you the skills to survive one of the most traumatic things that could happen to American lives is a major grid down, a terrorism-related grid down, an EMP-related grid down, a CME-related grid down. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what your conspiracy is because if you have to deal with it, you better be prepared. No one's coming to rescue you. We're going to give you the skills and the knowledge and let you test it out. We're going to walk you through what we see. We're going to walk you through what we would do. And hopefully that helps you because at the end of the day, that's what this is about is to help people out. And if we can get you better prepared, especially if you're a family man or, you know, if, if it's a husband and wife, I would love for that. That way you're both equally yoked within this training. Come out, come as you are. doesn't matter your skill level. I don't care if you're a basement person, you have very, very little skills. Or if you're a Thunder Warrior coming out of, you know, SEAL Team 6, it doesn't matter. Come get the training. It's going to be four awesome days. And, uh, you know, we're going to be able to share the gospel with people. We're going to be able to hang out, which is always a good time. There's going to be some more nighttime training that's going to be there. I'm going to be teaching people how to use flashlights tactically at night while clearing rooms or walking. Um, and once again, I have to stress the reason why I'm using uh, airsoft guns. For one thing, safety is always paramount. Safety is always key. If I take the ballistic part out of this, we don't have to worry about 95% of all safety needs. But the reason why I'm giving you the equipment to use that I am is because the most common two weapons you're going to find in America is Glock pistol and a AR-15 variant. So you'll have an AR-15 variant airsoft rifle that really hurts. <laughs> it shoots a, a BB projectile 330 feet per second, so it can hurt. And then you're also going to have a pistol. The pistol has a blowback mechanism. So that means that you actually have to charge your pistol and it can malfunction, which is great because we're going to be going over tactical reloads, emergency reloads. We're going to be going over working in teams, working in, in individuals, searching cars, searching people, how to move with your gun, how to move at night with your gun. We're going to be teaching you how to do bounds across danger zones and so much more. It's going to be a lot of fun for the American rifleman. This is the type of training that you need. You're not going to find it at very many other places with the skill set or with the level of uh, credentials like what's going to be there training you that day. So please, if you have any uh, questions, reach out to me, American Vindicta Show at gmail.com. Uh, ReadyMadeResources.com is going to be having the training syllabus put up and it's going to be having the dates and uh, the times all put up. There's literally no gear that you need. You can just come as you are. You know, dress appropriately. 
the the little BBs hurt. I don't know if we're going to get into a an airsoft battle, but you will be in a scenario based training, so you may get shot back at. Uh, we have all the face mask and all that stuff, guys. Um, so once again, if you want to if you want to contact myself, or you can contact Ready Made Resources and find out more about the training. It'll be posted up hopefully this week very soon. Also, we have a merchandise store, which is at the uh, website called Redbubble. If you just look up AV Merch, I believe that's what it's called, AV Merch. Um, I'll I'll repost it. It'll be in the um, the details of this show for the YouTube and for the Rumble. But guys, if you want to help support the show, get you a cool shirt, uh, a, a travel mug, a coffee mug. You can get a sticker or, you know, all different types of stuff. Because when you go to Redbubble, it has my artwork that's on there. And you can put it on whatever you want to put it on. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you today. I hope you're having a great week. Make sure that you train, that you prep, and that you pray. And stay frosty. The enemy is out there. Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum has said, you will own nothing and you will love it. And that's represented by what's going on across the planet today, where the economy of the world is in free fall. And nowhere is it more in evidence than with our own President Biden deliberately trying to sabotage what we have. Access to food, other resources. So Americans are in a unique position, really for the first time in our history, we're going to have to provide for ourselves or subject ourselves to the whim of the government. Do you really trust a government to feed you that left a thousand Americans behind enemy lines in Afghanistan? I don't think so. So where do you go? When you ask the question, who's the best prepper out there today? There's only one answer. Ready-made resources and Robert Griswold. I call him King Prepper. And that's how a lot of people think of him. You have everything there you'd want from night vision to storable food, how to prepare cooking in emergency situations, books and videos on how to prepare alternative energy, communication, first aid that you wouldn't think of, natural antibiotics, you name it, Bob has it. Now, here's the good thing about Bob Griswold that no one else does but him. You don't have to buy anything to talk to him. If you're not sure where to start with your preparation, no obligation phone call directly to Bob. You can talk to him for free. Most people will charge you an arm and a leg for a half hour conversation. That's not Bob Griswold. He cares about helping America get prepared. Go to readymaderesources.com or you can call the number directly at 800-627-3809. Again, that contact information readymaderesources.com for the best prepping outfit in the country or call Bob Griswold directly 800-627-3809. Mountain State Survival covers your basis for your planning, prepping, evacuation, bugging in, or bugging out needs. They carry anything from educational material, camping supplies, emergency services supplies, food, first aid, survival kit and equipment, shooting gear, survival gear, tactical gear. They carry it all. They got it in stock. Give Mountain State Survival a ring. That's mountain-state-survival.com. Get this type of supplies while you still can. 304-517-6935. Mountain State Survival is one of the only places that I know of currently that is still carrying the delicious peak refuel meal that is ready to eat. It's personally the only thing that I eat at this point whenever I go out camping 
whenever we have any type of emergency or disaster situation, that is the meal that I stick with. And you can find that at mountain-state-survival.com. Use Wrecker 5 for a 5% discount on your overall purchase. That's R-E-K-K-R 5, mountainstatesurvival.com. This show on the Heroes Nation app. Um, Heroes Nation is uh, the Heroes Nation app you can download in the App Store. Uh, it's up and coming. They got a lot of cool information on there. That is the main backup site so far for the American Vindictive Show. Uh, you'll, we'll also have some stuff on there that won't be on YouTube. It won't be on Rumble. It'll either be only on the GSRadio.net, who is the uh, host of the American Vindictive Show, or it will only be an exclusive for Heroes Nation. And with that, I mean, you know, stuff that we're doing with the cave exploration, with the archaeological stuff. Uh, I'm going to start getting into a lot of paranormal talks and, you know, coming at that from my law enforcement and Christian perspective and be having guests on. And that will be exclusive to Heroes Nation. So make sure that you give them some love. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for supporting me. God bless you and have a good day.